We're doing a tier list of the most played two drops in Commander. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, Beezy, and that makes us the nitpicking nerds. We got new videos for you every single day, so if you would like to give direct money to the show to support this daily content train, you can join our Patreon. There's a whole link in the description. It'll get you set up. It's really easy. You can also use our affiliate link for Dragon Shield, which has the best sleeves in the multiverse. Good sleeves. Go to our link in the description, get the sleeves, same price, and we get supported. And we're supported by Moxfield. They help sponsor this whole show. So there's going to be a mid-roll ad. Tell you what, guess where it is? You're going to be wrong. And happy birthday to everybody whose birthday is today. Let's get this video rolling. Yes, if you think we forgot any cards, we didn't. This is just the 25 most played two drops in Commander, uh, taking into account that a lot, we combined a lot of the cards that were very similar. Yes, we will tell you when we combined it. Cards. Yes, we, we can't really miss anything. It's just the most popular one. It is. It's the most played. So let's do our famous shrinky dink move where we shrink to the corner. Yeah, so the first card is Abrupt Decay. It's just two mana. Can't be countered. Destroys an island permanent, three or less. Uh, Abrupt Decay is really interesting because it is very, very good in higher power CDH level type stuff where it absolutely not being able to be countered and hitting most any permanent on the battlefield is just amazing. Yeah, it's basically a catch-all. Yeah, now that said, uh, as you go to lower power, this card falls off hard. Uh, not being able to be countered, a lot less relevant down in lower power levels. And on top of that, you miss a lot of the strong permanents in the lower power levels. Yeah, I would like to see uh, some kind of graph. Someone someone show me a graph of CDH threats. Like, at any given moment, what's the most threatening permanent on the table? And then show me that for, like, janky Battlecruiser decks. It's probably a lot higher in the Battlecruiser deck. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's going to be. It's very, very strong, but it, has a, it does have weaknesses in that the lower power, the casual EDH that we tend to play and talk about more often, it is a lot weaker. Yeah, it's not like an auto-include. Uh, let's go to Arcane Denial. This is a counterspell, but it draws you one card, so you don't go down cards, but it draws to the opponent two cards, which everybody seems to be scared of. Yeah, interesting about Arcane Denial is we really like it, and we think it's a good card to play because you always end up getting your card back. What's interesting about this one is it's a card that, if I'm not on a budget and not restricted in any way, I will n almost never go to this card because there's so many really, really, really good counter spells when you include all the free ones. Yeah, there's a lot of free ones. So this one doesn't get played as much, but I still think it's totally rock solid. I'd probably put it in B with Abrupt Decay. I agree. Uh, what, what, the last thing I wanted to add about um, Arcane Denial is that it's a great card to play when you're not playing the $100 counter spells, the $70 counter spells, the $30 counter spells. It's, the, it's my favorite one for about a dollar, two dollars. Yeah, feels good. Next is Abrupt Decay's cousin, Assassin's Trophy. You're still, now you're destroying any permanent. And you, they go get a basic land, and it comes in untapped as basic lands do. Yes, I think that uh, Assassin's Trophy has the biggest downside of these removal spells uh, that we're going to talk about in this video. But it also has the biggest upside in that it hits any permanent at instant speed for two mana. And that really can't be matched. Now, you don't want to cast this thing super early because usually when you do, you're destroying a permanent and they're just ramping for the rest of the don't game. Don't be destroying like Soul Ring on turn two unless you absolutely have to, but it's really only cutting Soul Ring in half. Yeah, I don't know. That actually feels... <laughs> I don't know. Then it's like you're just kind of like... Then it's equal to like Abrupt Decaying a Felwar Stone or something, but it's slightly more positive for them. Yeah, that's fair. Um, so Assassin's Trophy, uh, I think this one's an A. I think it's very good, but does have a very high downside that makes it like... Eh, sometimes it's, I don't put it in every single deck. Yeah, this is trending. Like, the S-tiers, I would say, are pretty much auto-includes. This is trending towards that, where it's like, you can just put this in any deck, and you really won't be upset. You can, yeah. I mean, it's it's a catch-all. It's literally a catch-all. Right. Baleful Strix, I was surprised. This one made it. It's a 2-2 two -two Death Touch draws you a card. Uh, well, this... It's a 1-1 one -one for 2 Death Touch draws you a card. Yeah, so for this one, why it makes it here, and why you'll see a lot of multicolor cards, is there's a discrepancy in uh, the top cards on EDH rec are based on... Um, percentages. percentages of decks, meaning if a card is blue and black, it can only be in blue and black decks, meaning it'll most like more likely to make those decks. Yeah, I'm not always interested in this. I don't think it's that great. It's kind of right up there with like Wall of Omens, except it does deter attackers a lot better than that card. Yeah, I think this one's a C. It's this middle of the road. It's passable. It's a playable magic card, and I'm going to put it in decks where I have synergies with it. That said, how many decks really synergize with a 1-1 with a one -one Death Touch Flyer? It's not that many. Yeah, not that many. Boros Charm, I was, th this one I just never play, honestly. It's uh, four damage to a player, uh, make your permanents indestructible, which is pretty much the only mode, and then a creature gains double strike, which for Voltron decks matters. This card, I see it, I've seen it do plenty of good blowouts and be a strong card in a lot of situations. What I don't like about it is that uh, I tend to go to other things first, but I can go right back to like what I was saying about Arcane Denial, where if I'm playing 
on this like smaller end where I'm not playing like Teferi's Protection, then this card really starts becoming more of a playable card. Yeah, I feel like there's going to be a, a, a slew of cards in the D tier where it's like, if I'm on a budget, you know, I might go to them. But as it stands, it's like I'm not choosing it over pretty much any other option. Yeah, I'm not a I'm not a huge fan, but I've seen this card perform fairly well. Yeah, I really don't think it's it's anything too special. Let's go to Counterspell. Also, not anything too special in the Commander world. It's just counters a spell. Yeah, it's very similar to Arcane Denial. Obviously, we're bigger fans of Arcane Denial, but I also I think that it's not a whole tier lower. I think it fits in the same tier as Arcane Denial. Where yeah, it's like, I don't think these, it's like F tier. I think these two cards are right next to each other. And depending on how you view Advantage and think about the game of Commander, you could easily switch and flop which one is higher. But I think they're just right next yeah, to each th other. Yeah, that's how we do it. One more thing about Counterspell to throw in is it is two blue pips. So certain decks will struggle to cast that a little more. A little more, but pips are pretty free in this format. How about Cyclonic Rift? It's uh, one of the best blue cards in the thing and it bounces everything and you win the game. What's the thing? Uh, all their stuff. Uh. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and just shove it right in S tier. I don't know if that's that's not even going to be controversial. No, this is obviously uh, uh, S tier card. This card doesn't scale really well into CDH, but outside of that, this card is stupid strong, period. Yeah, we don't even have to explain it. It's notoriously strong. How about... Damn! It's, Damn. Uh, it's a board wipe or a bad one-for-one -one removal spell. It's a really good board wipe, uh, and I used to be a, little, a lot higher in it. Not that high end damn, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying damn's a bad card. But I used to be higher in damn before, and now I've, I think about black and white just have all the best board wipes. Every, so, like, this is competing at such a high level. Now, I still think it's an A. You're still going to play this one fairly highly out of your, when you're in black-white decks, but you it's competing with a lot of board wipes. And, yeah, we're talking about this is two drops, but what we're really talking about is this is a four drop yeah. that wipes the board. Just but, like Psychonic Rift, you're casting it for seven. Exactly, but it is technically a two drop, so, yes, it's on this list. Still an A, very good, but... <laughs> competing with a lot. Yeah, I do think, obviously, it goes without saying, um, no Wrath of God, no Damnation in black-white decks. You have Dam. Yeah, exactly. Dam is much better, is pretty much strictly better. Pretty much. Than uh, Damnation and Wrath of God. Right, and Demonic Tutor can be all of the cards we've mentioned so far because it goes and finds any card, and that versatility at this mana cost is unmatched. This is the easy, this is above Cyclonic Rift, this is S++++. If we had a tier above us, it would be there because this card's that good. Yeah, it really depends on the mana value of tutors. I'm sure as we continue this series over the months, we'll get to some tutors. It's like, oh, three, three mana tutor. Oh, four mana tutor. It's like, those are not even close to as good as a two mana tutor. Unless they put them in play. Unless they put them in play. And then it's like different. That's a whole different thing. But, yeah. Let's go to D-Spark. Hey, you're exiling a permanent mana value four or greater. It's like the reverse abrupt decay. Yeah, I'm right on the same train as I am with Boros Charm. It fits in this like same category of like, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not unplayable. I've seen this card perform pretty well. But most of the time, I don't feel the need to go to it. Again, black and white, best two colors at removal. Yeah. I don't need to niche myself down to something that only has big permanents. Yeah, because you, you can feel it sometimes when you can't hit that important utility creature. Like they got like a Selvala or like a, I don't know, or I don't know, just some dumb mana dork, you know, Bloom Tender, just things you want to hit early, but you can't. Yeah, Bristic Study is another one that yeah. just, it just misses that card. And that because there's so much of those little things that, uh, Add up, I'm pretty off this card. <laughs> For that reason, I'm out. Yes. For that reason, D tier. Have you heard of this next one? It's called uh, Dank Side Extortionist, and it makes a uh, thousand treasures when it enters. Yeah, this card. Uh, we know about this one. This is one of the probably the best, if not one. It's one of the best, if not the best red card in the entire format. I, I'll safely go with. I can safely go with. I think it's the best. Yeah, it's it's that, or maybe Underworld Breach is also fighting with it. But Jessica's will. Jessica's, That's really the only ones in conversation. Yeah, exactly. But this is easy S tier, right below Demonic Tutor. It's too much advantage. It's, Ritual ETB. It's just it's. We've talked about it a million times. It's a design mistake, and we can take advantage of it. Million infinite combos combined with the fact that this is just a ritual on an ETB. Stupid. Yeah, Dovin's Veto counter a non creature spell can't be countered, but it is blue white. Yeah, uh, it's in blue white, and that's. Um, what keeps it down a little bit is that you have to be playing those two colors. Still a pretty strong card. This is negate that cannot be countered. You're ending the counter war on this almost every single time. Yeah, if you're in blue-white, I would probably play this over counterspell, as long as the rest of your counterspells aren't, like, restrictive on what you can hit. Yeah, uh, this is... Where do you have this one? I'm, I'm in, like... I'm in, like, top of C, bottom of B. Uh, I like top of C. That seems fine. Okay, yeah. It's totally I, good. I think it fits there. Um, I mean, it's, it's pretty close to counterspell, I think. Counterspells kind of draw the line between C and B with Arcane Denial, so it makes yeah. sense to go there. Uh, this next card's a two-mana tutor, but it is restrictive, but it is an instant with a lot of butts. It's Eladomri's Call. It goes and finds a creature card. Yeah, Eladomri's Call's pretty awesome. The fact that it's an instant is huge. 
absolutely huge in this card. Sure, you have to only go get creatures, but the fact of the matter is when you can hold it up with other spells, it adds to its power so much. This is an easy A tier, super strong. Tutors are good. I mean, do we need to tell you that? Yeah, tutors are fantastic, and I love that there's there's some new tech with it. Not new, but newer than when the card was released in, like, 1947 is you can go get like a, a solitude or like another creature with flash. It's like, surprise, I have interaction or surprise, I have whatever I need, a blocker or something. If you're going to pick solitude, you couldn't think of the other one, the green one? Endurance. Endurance? <laughs> yeah. I was not I was actually only thinking of white creatures. <laughs> oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, that's fair. All right. <laughs> the next one I was like, Restoration Angel. Yeah, that's not even a good card. Yeah, it's not great interaction piece. <laughs> uh, feed the Swarm. Terrible uh, interaction piece, kind of, but it has enchantment on it, so it's like do I want to play a bad spell because black doesn't have access to anything else? Yes. And Some that, people say yes. That, that is, that's my answer. I'm yes on this card. I think this card is a D. Now, when I look at this card, it is very medium, and it does not beat most other removal spells. If you touch green, if you touch white, obviously you're going Never. nowhere near this card. Grixis colors sometimes need to go to this card so you can have your one answer, especially if you're playing a tutor or two. So Yeah, yeah. they can struggle with it. and Sometimes it's just nice to have. Sometimes you have to fire it off on something and just lose seven life and you feel terrible. Yeah, and it, it's not the best thing in the world, and it is low on my scale of like removal I want to go to. I don't want to play this card, but sometimes I feel it necessary. Yes. Growth Spiral. Everyone's favorite cantrip, I feel like. People love Explore. People love Growth Spiral. All it does is draw a card, and you can put a land out. I don't think there's really a reason to play this card not, in, for most cases. Not too often. It's totally fine. It fits in, like, your landfall type decks. Yeah, but it's like a, it's like not always putting a land in play, which is what you kind of want to guarantee. So, to me, it's just like, well, how many spells can I play? Because I'm playing 17 Rampant Growths already. I'm playing all the Sky Shroud Claims. I now I need cards that do something, and this could just be that. Yeah, I guess this one kind of fits. If, where this one fits is kind of in C tier for me because it's not bad. Uh, it's totally passable. It's a playable spell that does enough to fit a slot of any uh, deck that cares about landfall. Man, I see. I'd probably, I would stick this in, like, the bottom of D. I feel like the floor and ceiling are so close together, and neither of them were that great. That's fair. I mean, it's very close to a ramper growth. Do you want to, like, compromise here? Sure. Like, on top of D? Top of D is fine for me. I, f I feel like this card, it's not great, but it is playable. Right. Next, we have everyone's favorite artwork. It's a Johnny slicing a net in half. It's heroic intervention. Makes all your permanents hexproof and indestructible until the next turn. Now, this card... Or until your turn. This card... No, just for the end of turn. Very smooth. Uh, yes. This, is, I think, is a very overplayed card, but still fairly good. This one I have in C tier. Yeah, uh, this is a C. I'm not a huge fan, but it, there's no denying... It stops board wipes. I do not want. I do not often play this when I'm mixed with white mm -hmm. uh, because I have the fairies protection, which I feel like I don't want to play too many of this effect anyway. Yeah, and I can play a chrome as well, even as another variant of this card. So yeah, I'm hesitant to play purely defensive cards. We talked about that a lot. Maybe we can make a video about it. But this definitely falls in that category. And so, some of the problem with this card is if I were to rattle off the best six board wipes in Commander, it's like five of them don't even care about this card. Very true. Or like that, Toxic Deluge, Cyclonic Rifting, and like even now there's like Farewell and whatnot. Yeah, there's also um, you missed our favorite one, Tragic Arrogance. Yeah, it's just none of that, this doesn't do anything against that. But that said, you do want Border Protection in a lot of your deck, so it is a passable playable card for them. Yeah, especially Model Green, where you don't have like no options. Yeah, well, one thing about all the cards we talked about so far is it's. An, I would never fault anyone for playing these They cards. have homes. Yeah. Except for Gross Spiral. But even Gross Spiral. <laughs> okay, Lightning Greaves, Crypt Creature has Shroud and Haste, one of the most overplayed cards, but certainly an effective card in a lot of decks. Yeah, exactly. I, I, this card, I think, sees a little too much play, but it's still very, very good. I think this card is an A. It, I think so. When you have it in the right decks and you're playing it where it belongs, the card performs very, very well. You can put it in Elf Ball decks to give all your Elves haste to tap for mana, or you can just throw it in any deck where your commander needs haste and protection. Something it's a like game changer. Atali and Kalia just come to my mind. These cards that just... When they have Greaves, this their decks go from being eh to, okay, we got to stop that. See, I mean, it sounds dramatic, but in some of these decks that are critical Lightning Greaves decks, it's like a time walk where it's like, I want a Tali to attack. That's what my whole deck does. Well, it does it now a turn sooner. I don't care. Like, let's go. It just feels like you took an extra turn. And it's protected from spot removal going forward. Yeah, they can get you before the equip. But it, once it gets on, now spot removal is not taking it out. Yeah, you're in trouble. And... The, like I, we said with the Elf Ball deck, it's like, I can now move it for free and just play Mana Dorks into Mana Dorks with the Mana Dorks. Mana Dorks. Uh, Mana yeah. Dorks. Yeah. Next. Mana Drain. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> what, and what a transition it was. Mana Drain is the, I I just said it recently, it's the best counterspell when you're paying mana. When you're actually putting mana into it, it's the best 
one. It's absurd how much value you get. And friendly reminder, did you know this card is thirty six dollars? It is thirty. Well, it actually went up to thirty six because it was thirty three, mm-hmm. uh, which you put the wrong place. But got this thirty three, thirty four dollars. Now it's up to thirty six. Get them now. This card's amazing. Even though they're not twelve dollars, you and, should still get them. And this is not a video about telling you to buy uh, Mana Drain. What, where do you have this? It gets an A. It swings the game hugely. I would probably stick it here. You could put it in any deck. It, like because the thing about Mana Drain is like it's almost like a flat line throughout power levels. Even though you just get. Like in motor powers, you get more mana. Oh man! With it. It's like in the CDH, it's so important, and two mana is huge. But then in like Jank, I'm countering like Jinkataxius, and that's huge. Yeah, that's fair. It's, it's, it's interesting. Um, the S tier is kind of broken, so I, I guess managing is not broken. Can we just, put it in S tier? Maybe I didn't really think about it's it. It's close. I mean, I'm fine with top of A. I think it's a good spot for it. It's a good spot. All right, Arcane Signet, which is a stand-in for Talismans, Signets. You throw in Felwar Stone, Mind Stone, Thought Vessel, uh, everything else. Yeah, these are S. Uh, I mean, as long as you're not playing green, two mana rocks are absolutely must-haves. I mean, obviously you want the fast mana if you can have the fast mana, if you can afford the fast mana, if your meta calls for the fast mana. Just auto includes. But these, these even even CDH decks are playing the higher end ones. The Fellow Wire Stones and the Arcane Signets are seeing play in the CDH decks. They still are good enough. They just are going to get your mana worth very quickly. You pay it, you play it, oh, there's one mana back. Next turn, you're even. Yeah. And then from there, it's crazy. It's super good. The next one is Marksfield.com, which is the best deck building website on the internet. Seriously, we can't speak highly enough about this website. They provide a service for free for the MTG community, and it is absolutely amazing. You can go there. They have a ton of different formats, but you know we are going to tell you. Use it for Commander. Put all your Commander decks in here. Catalog your Commander decks. Keep track of them. Put it When you're done with the deck, put it as retired. Now when you take apart your deck in paper, you can and you want to be like, oh man, I kind of like that old deck. Go back to Moxfield, look into your retired decks folder, right? and now you can just look at what you used to have and rebuild it if you want. And it's in a folder, so it's not you don't have to scroll past them all when you're trying to build real decks. It's not in your mind. You can just set it aside and have it as a little keepsake instead of having to delete it because you just have to scroll past it. Every folders time. as organizational tools on the website are very very useful. They seriously, um, I there's I am constantly, every time I go on there, I mean, obviously, Joe's decks folder. Yes. Because I need to look at my decks. I want to look at what I'm playing and see my decks. Yeah, and I think it, above Demonic Tutor? Easy. easy it's easily above Demonic Tutor. Easy S tier. Because you put Demonic Tutor in Moxfield, but you can't tutor for Moxfield with Demonic Tutor. Exactly. Ex- perfect point, BZ. That's all we need to say on it. Uh, let's go to Negate. This is your low budget... Uh, cheap option for a counter spell it to- is totally fine it is the most fine card ever made in the history of the universe but i would never really play it outside of a budget yeah it's another one of the, it's just d uh and what i like about this is these this, this uh this tier list so far we haven't had any poop tiers like no. all these cards are passable playable cards that i would put in decks under the right circumstances so it, just like all the rest of them d Playable, not needed for most decks. Yeah, I feel like this one also might be a D. It's Rakdos' term. You're exiling the graveyard, shattering something, or in a rare scenario, dealing one damage to each player for each creature they have. I would put this in D tier, but I want to uh, I want to state something that just uh, it has exile a graveyard on it. I am much higher on cards exiling graveyards recently. I'm going to start putting them in more of my decks. I'm going to have like at least one or two more hit the graveyard effects. I've noticed that it is just an underplayed thing to like get rid of graveyards because there's so much interaction with it so you kind of need it and a lot of the some of the free wins spells that we could say or it's like just play the game for 10 turns and then play this spell and you win uh that occurs a lot more in battle cruiser with like living death and uh rise from the dark realms yeah and finale of eternity absolutely um also this card um i just realized i have a perfect home for this card Rakdos. Your Rakdos Charm Tribal deck? Rakt- uh, no, I don't have that, unfortunately. But my Zyra deck is a is a, a Jundamau burn deck. So we this- think maybe let's upgrade it to bottom of C. No, I'd still give it a D. Ah, well. I mean, I still think it fits in D. <laughs> I still think it's a card you're not playing super often, but it is a good card that has homes. Okay, it's the best D so far. Uh, next is Rampant Growth, but not really. It's three visits, nature's lore, far seek, and everything else that costs two mana and ramps the land into place. Sakura Tribe Builder. Yeah, exactly. This is two mana ramp. If you're wondering why we did this, there's a we would have 17, this whole list would be two mana ramp spells uh, and two mana rocks. Yeah, it's like, do you do want this. me to cover Boros Signet and Rakdos Signet? Or Farseek and and then, you know, Rampant Growth. Yeah, exactly. This is an easy S tier, again, just as good as the uh, rocks. That they we hold to... these green decks together. Yeah, they're very, very strong. I, they're, they're above the rocks. Oh, right? yeah, sorry. I forgot we were, like, very paying atten- very attentive to the order. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I, green decks don't need rocks because they have the two-mana ramp. You know what? Since we're attentive to the order, boom. All right, Swiftfoot Boots, 
It's like Lightning Greaves, but it costs one, and it gives Hexproof, so you can still target it. So, like, kind of better in Voltron decks? This one is interesting. I do think this is a solid tier worse than I think so. Lightning it's, it's pretty Greaves. noticeable. No, I would say it's probably the top of B. E. Mm-hmm. It's still a very good, strong card, and often decks want to play both of them. But Lightning Greaves is a noticeable amount better. Well, it's like when you start talking about kill spells or tutors. It's like, you know... Um, Deadly Relic is like the best feeling ever. It's in it's incredible how much efficiency you get out of the card. And if you just make it one mana, it's like twice as worse. Twice it's, as it's so much harder to cast and hold up because no, we should let's just leave it at twice as worse. We don't need to go any further than that. Oh, I thought you were just like <laughs> talking to me <laughs> regularly. I was like, what? <laughs> What's going on? And put it at the top of B. Oh, the top of B. I think so. All right, it's the top of B. Yeah, Move that, over everybody else. There we go. All right, Sylvan Library. Uh, this is. Two mana, you draw three, and then you can keep all of them in your hand by paying four life per card, or you can put two of them back and lose nothing. Yeah, this the faster your deck is, the better this card is. If the game's going long, can you really? How many times can you afford to pay four life? I don't know, but if you're just gonna turbo through and try to combo or something, I'll pay eight life. I don't care. Yeah, this is this card's an A. I think it's really really good, especially in the higher power games where it's going to be like actually like who cares? Eight life, eight life. I'll just keep drawing cards. This doesn't matter. That being said, um, unless you're gaining life in like mid rangey type combat matters, this thing can be costly. Yeah, it could be costly. And I'm definitely not here for the you know, the worst mode where it's like if it was just look at the top three, rearrange them every turn. No. Yeah, it's Miri's Guile. Yeah. Right. Don't do that. You gotta you gotta aggressively pay some life. Don't play Miri's Guile. That card's not very good. <laughs> oh, this this is the card that was like our most controversial short ever where we were like, here's some removal spells that are better than Terminate and we listed a bunch of them and we could list more because more have come out since then. Terminate just feels like in this D tier thing. We like we really don't play it in a budget, maybe, but not guaranteed. Yeah, I've been slightly higher on Terminate lately, but it's not like I'm like clamoring to jam this in the deck. Yeah, I agree. I think this is a very super solid budget card nowadays. Like I'm fine with putting it in any budget deck um, because two mana uh, one for ones are just they get they they pass the the litmus test for what I want to be playing. I'd have to look into on it. a budget. I'd have to look into it because I know Colgan's command went down, so maybe that like. I mean, obviously that's better, but I don't know what that card costs. Yeah, that's I have to look. Yeah, but I, I just think you end up playing this card a fair amount. In, I think I would definitely play Rakdos Charm over this. In but you just yeah, in budget decks, you're probably going to play Terminate. I'm not going to too much out. Uh, Black just has so many good removal spells. Not that it, and again, if you're playing this in your non-budget deck, it's not a bad choice. It really isn't like not the end of the world. But maybe we would say you're losing some percentage. Points. I I like to think of it. It's just like the explosive vegetation. Of uh, of removal spells. Yeah. It's not that it's not that explosive vegetation is bad. It's not by any stretch. But there are so many better versions of that card and better uh, cards that you can play over it. Yes, and if you want to see some of those better cards you can play over it, you can check out our one drops that are a lot cheaper. And there's a tier list about them. They're they are they one, cost one mana. Yeah, peace out, trap scouts. <laughs>